Welcome to another episode. It's Dave Mormon here, home service business coach. I'm coming at you live here in my coaching studio. And like the title says, uh, today's topic, I'm gonna be diving into the three buckets that you need to work on if you wanna scale your home service business to 100K per month. So this could be for washing, for landscaping, for painting, really any services around a, a homeowner's home. Um, this will kind of give you a really solid framework. And quite honestly, this framework can work in different businesses. I've had uh, other businesses outside the home service space as well that I've been able to deplore these principles and these strategies and it works um, in a very similar fashion. But to be true to the channel and podcast, let's keep it specific to the home service space. So what are those three buckets? And before I dive in, I just want to say, you know, that 100K a month mark, whether you get there, you get close to it, you know, $84,000 per month of revenue. If you can hit that every month, you've got a seven figure business on your hands. So I think sometimes we round up and say, oh, 100K a month. You know, what I really found in my business was once we hit about 700, 750,000 in revenue, that is really where you can have a team in place to really help you run the business and really get a little bit of breathing room um, from really the day-to-day -day, uh, of the business. So, you know, 100K, 80K, wherever it is you wanna end up on the continuum, maybe you wanna go beyond that, totally cool. Um, this is just gonna give you like a framework of where you wanna be going. Okay, so that first bucket that we need to deep dive on, and these are gonna be in order of like one, two, three to keep it very logical for you. So number one is going to be lead generation, okay? Lead generation, we gotta be generating business because sometimes we think we go into business, we start a painting business, we're like, hey, we're just gonna have people call us and we're gonna get you know leads and get tons of work. It's like, it doesn't work that way. You are right now like an obscurity, you're obscure, right? Nobody knows who you are. It is your job to go out and tell the marketplace who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. And so there's a whole different things we can do with lead generation. Personally, I'm a huge fan of organic marketing. And so, you know, becoming famous literally in the neighborhoods that you work in. When I had my painting business, I literally had a reference page. This was before Google reviews, right? 2010, 2011, before they really got going. I literally had a reference page of like 15 other neighbors that I did in that subdivision, name, um, phone number, address, literally they're happy clients. So I asked them, could they be a reference for us? Literally when I'm doing quotes, you know, Mrs. Smith, your house can be $5,000 to paint it. If you want to check in, we've painted 15 of your neighbors, right? When she's hearing that, oh my goodness, like, yeah, go get another quote just to make sure it's not getting ripped off. But if the other quotes are anything around there, I'm going with the guy who's already done 15 jobs in the neighborhood, there's tons of social proof, right? So lead generation, become absolutely famous in the neighborhoods that you work in. I think that's the best way to watch your ad spend because what's going on now with digital marketing, does digital marketing work? Yes, it does but you need to pay to play to get those leads and you need to be relying on them as well. If I need to get more leads from Google or Facebook, well, I gotta throw in another thousand, another five grand, another 10 grand. I would rather go out and get my own clients and go right to them. So that's why I love the organic marketing. Um, that's still what we do in my business today. It's what I teach in my coaching program, um, all about it. So number of strategies with that, but kind of overarching lead generation, so vitally important as you get your business going. And especially in the first few years, like of these three buckets I talk about, um, the lead generation is one that in your first three years of business, I would be putting like 70% of your time into getting the phone to ring, into getting business, right? And we're just coming through like a 10 year um, blitz in contracting where everybody's been super busy Dave, I don't need more leads. I need to go build a team. I need to recruit people. How do you keep employees? How do you manage people, right? Those are largely the topics and they still are, but as the economy goes up, goes down, we still need to be very sharp on how we can go generate leads into our business, right? And ultimately, like high level, it all comes down to building like a local brand in your area. You look at the big brands today, right? Apple, Tesla, Starbucks, right? These number of huge brands. And you've got to build that on like a very micro scale, but in a very hyper focused way in your local market, right? And so again, it comes back to becoming famous and being known as the guy or the girl that does the thing, right? Oh, that is Tom. He does the landscaping around here, right? He does all of the neighbors or that is 
you know, Jody, she's got a window cleaning business and she takes care of everybody here, does the Christmas lights, whatever it is. And you guys know how much I love cross selling different services, right? In my company now, we have six different services that we cross sell um, to our clients. And so we're able, instead of just getting a thousand dollars from clients one time, we're able to offer them our other services year round. And so that's why we've rebranded to Revive Services. And so we have this now multi-tiered approach where we're able to cross sell our services and stay busy year round. So I'm going down a rabbit trail. So let's stay back on point. Lead generation is your first bucket. So vitally important, okay? Bucket number two. Once you got the leads coming in, you know what happens next. You've got to sell those leads. So sales is our second bucket. It's a whole department in your business, right? Right now, if you're owner operator, you're literally like head of lead generation and you're also the head of sales. And I really think rather than getting caught up in the production and doing the thing, you've got to find a way to free yourself up from production so that you can be so focused into these first two buckets here because they are the ones that are going to move the needle on your business. And most home service businesses get plateaued. They get stuck 10, 20, 30 K per month. They can't bust through that ceiling. The only way to bust through it is get yourself out of production and go deep on this um, leads generation and also in sales and landing the jobs, right? It's that quote, nothing happens until someone makes a sale. I truly believe that if a lot of home service business owners could improve their, their sales acumen by 20, 30%, they'd have a tremendously different business on their hands. And so I've read a lot of books to get better at sales, um, you know, just to help me in my own development. I think a great book, if you've not read it, How to Win Friends and Influence People, I think that book should be read on the regular, like annually, if you can, because you can pull gold nuggets out of that book put it right into your sales process and be um, lighting it up with book jobs. And so some of us are looking at our calendars today and we're like, hey, it's it's empty, right? And we could say, oh, it's a recession or there's bad seasonality in my business, right? It's winter time, nobody wants whatever service I have. You've gotta figure out a way to make your marketing messaging so strong that you can have clients coming to you with an attractive offer that you're offering and then you got to be able to sell them, right? And, and you know, sales people are like, ah, I don't want to get sold. People want to buy your stuff. They just don't want to be sold. So you got to make it very attractive to them. People buy from who they know, like, and trust. So you've got to become the authority in the space. Again, getting back to famous in your neighborhood, you've got to be the person who does the thing. And you're going to be able to, to get some jobs rolling in and you're going to be able to sell. And those are the home service businesses that take off to those 80, 100K months is because they had an owner or they had a key person who was really good at selling, right? And I look at my company today, I've got two individuals that are very, very good at selling, right? My two managers, very good at taking a prospect in or a repeat client, cross-selling them our services, maybe bundling it up, giving them a bit of a, a price concession, and boom, booking them right onto our schedule. So you've got to be really good at sales. Otherwise, um, you're not going to be able to make it to step three. You're not going to be able to hit those months. And another thing is like, there are some people in our space that are very good at marketing and generating leads, but like they're just sucky at sales, right? Maybe they're only converting 10% of their leads that come in. And then we've got others that maybe their ego gets in the way and day by book 80% of the quotes I do. Well, I'm saying, I don't want you booking 80% of the leads because we can probably charge a lot more than you're charging because it's not about in home services, it's not about who does the most jobs, okay? It's about who makes the most money. If we're just talking economically from a capitalist perspective, who makes the most money and who generates the most gross profit, that does not mean who does the most jobs. The person doing the most jobs will not have the most profitable business. So it's like this graph continuum. You've got to find that sweet spot where you've got the sweet number of jobs at the best conversion rate for the best price, right? And typically those are not conversion rates at 10% or 80%. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. And so you got to really look at what marketing message are you putting out there? Are you having to run promotions and specials to attract people in? That's going to be a big problem for your business. Or is your marketing messaging that of such you've established yourself 
as a premium price provider in your market. And if you want one way, one ninja hack, you're watching this 10 minutes in, give me, a, give me a ninja hack, Dave. Literally, if you look at raising your prices and becoming the premium price provider, you're gonna have an incredible business on your hand. And I think that is one of the biggest levers that I like to fix with companies initially in my program is re-examine your pricing. And you can't just go and charge 50% more money if I cannot work with you and change this mindset and show what you're actually providing to the marketplace. Because, you know, business is just an exchange of value. And when you're, when you're, if people are looking at you, prospects are looking at your price versus the value, right? Price is what you sell and value is what the customer gets. And so you've got to figure out if you want to sell higher prices, how can I create more value for the customer? And that is going to lead you to get all the sales that you want in the world. And the last piece of advice I'll give you, because I feel like this should be a whole nother um, episode, quite honestly, if you're, if you're up for that, let me know maybe in the comments. We'll do more on, on sales training. Literally, um, the best piece of advice my mentor told me was in sales, when you care more about your prospect than you care about making the sale, you're gonna have all the sales you can want in the world. And so I'm telling you right now, do not chase the money chase fixing the client's problem and bring them value and you're gonna have all the sales that you want. So that's bucket number two is sales. You gotta do it, you gotta focus on it. It's going to scale your business. Okay, and final third bucket, you've been waiting patiently for this, is fulfillment. Fulfillment slash production, right? Kind of call it the same thing or operations, right? This is literally where we've created the leads, we've got phones coming in, right? Leads are coming in, we're going out looking at jobs, that sales, right? Follow up with the prospect, I book them onto my calendar. Mrs. Smith, I can get your $5,000 paint job in for next Thursday, me and my team. And then next Thursday rolls around, boom, we're in fulfillment. And so fulfillment in the home service space is uh, extremely necessary. You've gotta hit it 10 out of 10 uh, for our core values for my home service business. Number two core value is excellence. And that means we want to do a 10 out of 10 job and never settle for good enough on a client's property. We want the bar so high because right now I believe in our home service industry, the bar is quite low. People don't respond to their phone calls. They don't do a very good job. They don't use great products. They don't educate the client. They don't follow up, etc., etc. There's such an opportunity here to do fulfillment excellent, but there's also an opportunity for this being a bear trap where you take fulfillment so um, to your core that you can never ever give it up. And that's why we have this epidemic in our industry of home service business owners that literally cannot get off the truck, right? You've got to get out of your way in growing your business. And I would much rather, you're gonna have a higher ceiling and get to those 100K months quicker if you're stuck, stuck in lead generation and sales, right? Because I've been stuck in lead generation and sales with my painting business back in the day. We still got to like $550,000, $600,000 in revenue with literally me being, me being stuck in sales. I was basically the estimator of the painting business. I had three crews going uh, and you know I'd make about $120,000 a year and take three months off and go backpack through Asia, right? When I'm 24, 25 years old, that is a great uh, lifestyle, right? You guys have maybe heard how I've gotten my start in the home service space. It was through painting. And I had a painting franchise, right? And so I was, I was out of fulfillment. If I was staying in fulfillment, and it was like Dave had to be the one to paint the fascia or prep the room or spray the house or do whatever in fulfillment or run to the paint store, right? Those of you with painting businesses or very similar businesses, you can identify with how many moving parts are in fulfillment. If I stuck my nose in fulfillment, I would literally cap out $200,000, $250,000 per year. And, and there's nothing wrong with that setup. However, if you're on this channel or you're probably listening, you're probably watching saying, maybe this guy has something to teach me of how I can actually have a home service business run without my constant involvement um, inside the business. That's all I'm getting at. And so I would say if you're stuck, in, in sales and marketing, lead generation, your ceiling will be twice as high as the guy or the girl who's stuck into fulfillment, okay? So sometimes we think in fulfillment, if it's up to, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If anything's gonna happen, it has to be me, right? I've heard all these things before. And take it from me, everyone, like I've had a home service business for 14 years. It's very attractive 
to stay in one department in your business. And I think sometimes we start our business out of, um, you know, we do research on YouTube and we see how to build out a soft wash skid or build out, you know, this um, beautiful painting truck and everything's organized. And we don't want to give that up that's where we get stuck in our business and so this is like the biggest opportunity in your business because a strong fulfillment system will also create the most happy clients which will refer people which will go right back to lead generation and you create this feedback loop right a feedback loop is literally just when you know what the output is you know what the end result the desired outcome is you know what inputs need to feed into that to create that then you just move what comes out of the outputs, right? And you feed it right back into the input. So it's like a happy client, tell someone, referral, right back to the, that's now the input, the referral, the referee, I guess, the referral lead coming in, and boom, that goes right into our cycle. And then they're happy and they refer. And so that's what a feedback loop is. The outputs predict the inputs and that makes the world go round. And so I'm not saying, get out of fulfillment because it's not worth your time and just set that up where it's like a seven out of 10. No, I'm saying if you work bananas in fulfillment for like two to three months, you can build an absolutely incredible team. And what I see in the home service space is like a strong team in fulfillment. It's either your greatest leverage or it's your greatest like headache, right? I'll put it that way because I've had teams before where I'm like, look, we're not delivering that excellent experience. It's very stressful as a business owner. Why don't I just get in and do everything myself? And so you've got to build, it starts with leadership. It starts with you. It's a whole other episode. How do I build a world-class team? But let me tell you, it is possible because, you know, why else would you create a business if you just create a job for yourself and stay in fulfillment for many years to come, right? For me, um, it didn't take a terribly long time, but it took a lot of work, right? And so in the years 2018 to 2019, I moved my business from $155,000 in revenue to $582,000. We basically 4 x our growth through the course of one year. And how we really did that was me getting out of fulfillment setting up the cruise, we went crazy on recruiting. I spent all my profit I made the year before into outputting, or outfitting new vehicles, getting software set up, hiring a production manager, training our crews, setting up a production team meeting, like literally dialing everything in so we could get this thing running like a machine. And so I wanna make this piece of content for you just to look in the mirror and say, literally ask yourself like, how am I bottlenecking my business today? And the chances are you're gonna answer is in fulfillment. If the crews are still texting you or if you don't have a crew and you're texting the client directly, um, you're still bottlenecking fulfillment because there's only one of you. And so I want to make this content to challenge you and just say, is there maybe a better way? Do you think we could maybe make a trade in the next month as you examine your business where we actually pull you out of fulfillment and move you more into lead generation and sales? And trust me, if this doesn't work in two or three months with my challenge, just go back into fulfillment. Go like, that's where growth happens, right? You get comfortable and you sit in your comfortable little seat. I'm in a comfortable seat right now, right? I'm comfortable, right? I went out running this morning, it's raining, windy. I'm not very comfortable. How does growth happen? I wanna lose a bit of weight, I wanna to tone up. I gotta get out and run, I gotta stay in shape. How does growth happen? I get out of my comfort zone. I wanted to stay in bed and truthfully, I actually wanted to come in here, start making this content because I get so excited for it. But no, go and eat the frog, get out of your comfort zone. And so I'm just making this content, asking you to examine yourself and say, hey, maybe you are bottlenecking the business with how comfortable you've been sitting. Maybe you've been a technician in your window cleaning business and your revenues are like 86,000, you know, 99,000, 102,000, and you're just growing so increment so incrementally like that is not um the best way to scale the business in my opinion you're basically staying at a 30 or 40 dollar 50 dollar an hour task when you could be making a hundred dollars per hour plus as a salesperson in your business so i want to challenge your beliefs today don't tell yourself there's no one good out there because i'm telling you like people that are not as intelligent as you have already succeeded in this space and i'm like i don't even know what my iq is it's not that high but my work ethic and my uh, hunger for knowledge and strategy is like a 10 out of 10. And so if I'm looking to grow a business, 
I'm literally saying, what business do I want to grow and who's already done that and let me go get around them and let me learn. I've done that with uh, my painting business. I was in a mentorship program. I've done that with my washing business. I hired a business coach um, who had a successful washing business, wanted to scale it up. Uh, and then with my coaching business, I've hired now three different coaches to literally figure out how do we scale this company and get clients excellent results. And so that's my focus um, for my business and on this channel for right now as, as this time that I'm making this for you to bring you some value for your business. And all the while, I can't grow this coaching business if I don't have a successful home service business that can run independently of me. And so to wrap it up, the only reason the home service business can keep going and keep growing is because I pulled myself out of fulfillment. We've got crews now ready, trained, working, doing great jobs, making happy clients, and we've got managers to manage those crews and make sure that we can keep moving the business forward. And so I'm making this to challenge your limiting beliefs. How is How are you holding back the business and how are you bogging down the fulfillment of your business? Because let me tell you, 14 years in this, tens of thousands, I don't know, thousands of jobs we've done. I've hired over 140 staff. Literally, I look back and, and how we're able to do that was me firing myself out of different positions. And that's a whole nother side, how to get out of marketing and sales. But for now, like get yourself out of fulfillment because that's step one in the business. Like how do you get more leads is literally get off the truck, right? That's like the best way because you've got to free up your time so you can go focus on bucket one, two, three. So. Wrapping up, all these buckets, extremely important, but in order to um, grow the business, you've got to go in order. You've got to generate your leads. You've got to close those leads for your ideal target customers. Keep in mind, not everyone's your client, right? It's a whole other piece of content. I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. And lastly is the fulfillment. Get the production on lockdown so your clients are happy. Send them out a survey, make sure they're leaving you reviews, referrals, make sure they're happy because the fulfillment, if you can get that set up, that's where you buy back your time because 80% of your time stealing activities are gonna be created from fulfillment. So that's why we wanna set that up proper and that's why it all comes back to systems are so vitally important. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you're on YouTube, thank you for subscribing to my content. If you're on the podcast, awesome. I wish you well today and I'll leave you with the last piece of call to action. If you do wanna learn more, if you listen in 20 minutes, you're like, man, this is freaking amazing. I wanna write down some notes. If you wanna get help putting these systems into place in your business, I still have a few spots in my foundations coaching program. It's our mentorship program where I literally show you all the systems and hold your hand to dial in all these systems into your business. So if you want to learn more about that, just go ahead, click the link below, get on a free strategy call. Me and my team, we're not going to hard sell you. We're going to diagnose where you're at, see if we can help you. And if we think we can, we'll make you an offer. But want to wrap up there, guys. Have an incredible day. God bless. We'll talk to you on the next video.